My next guest this morning is one of the authors that you'll find published in absolutely amazing ebooks. Now, to give you a little background on him, he spent many decades of his life working as a historian, a poet, a university teacher, and a writer of both longer and shorter fictions while living all around the world. Brewster Chamberlain retired from an executive position in 2001 from the U.S. to Holocaust Memorial Museum to move down here to Key West with his wife. Right now, he's currently working on a series of stories that revolve around the city of Berlin during the 20th century. Brewster, it's a pleasure having you here with me this mm, morning. It's a pleasure <laughs> to be here. Thank you. Now, it sounds like you have lived and worked all over the world, Brewster. Well, not all over the world. All over Europe and the United States, yes, okay, that's okay. true. But I've never been, for some strange reason, to the Pacific area of the world. Well, maybe you'll change that someday soon. If I live so long, <laughs> I'll be happy to do that, yeah. All right. How long have you been writing for, Brewster? Oh, I started at the age of 14, mm -hmm. and that was many, many decades ago, <laughs> uh, in the early 50s. Mm -hmm. And on and off, I've been writing ever since. Some of my work is academic in nature. Uh, when I taught at uh, various universities, and when I worked for the Holocaust Museum in Washington, it was very academically oriented. But I'm not doing that any longer. I'm writing fiction, poems, uh, plays, mm -hmm. and um, I've steered away from the academic end of the business uh, since we've been here. Okay. Well, let's talk about the books that you have published with absolutely amazing mm. books. Right, right. Well, Cheryl Rhodes, as you know, is uh, a very energetic a uh, person who has his finger in many pies. And I was very pleased when he asked me to join his stable of authors, so to speak, when he began his uh, e-book publications uh, late last year. And I had three manuscripts that I was sitting essentially in the desk drawer. Mm -hmm. And I was happy to pull them out and show them into the light of day. And Cheryl looked at them, and we uh, revised a little bit here and there. Mm -hmm. He had the covers designed, and now they're available f on a Kindle mm -hmm. and Nook, and from his uh, own website, they can be purchased if you have the technical uh, apparatus to right. download them. And I'm very pleased with uh, the way he's, he's done it. So these were manuscripts that you hadn't looked at in years, Brewster? Well, some of them go back, yes, many years. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, the Paris chapbook, for example, has been sitting around for more than 10 mm -hmm. years. It began as a list of uh, statements made by certain people, uh, mainly Americans, British, and French, about the city of Paris. And I wrote these things down when I was writing my book uh, called Paris Now and Then, uh, and that came out 10 years ago, so at least 10 years old, these, uh, this compendium of thoughts on the city by other people, to which I've attached my own commentary on their commentary. Okay. okay. And it's sometimes sarcastic, sometimes gentle, um, very often dismissive, uh, when they, in my opinion, have made a mistake about the city. Okay. Right. Okay. The other, um, the other two books, one of them is more difficult to define. It's called Shorts of All Sorts. Mm -hmm. And it's, a com again, a compendium of poems, one-act plays, uh, pieces of a novel, short stories, um, general essayistic thoughts on various subjects, including Key West. Um, and that is also available through the uh, Kindle and the Nook and so on. The third volume is um, a, a collection of lectures that I gave over the years at the Durrell School of Corfu, which was an English language school that held seminars in the island of Corfu, which is uh, by the Albanian uh, shore, but it's Greek. And um, it was begun in the year 2001 by an old friend of mine, Richard Pine, who wanted to pay homage to the Durrell brothers, Lawrence and Gerald. Uh, Lawrence, well known as a novelist, the Alexandria Quartet in the late 50s and early 60s. He was at the time world renowned. Uh, his brother Gerald is a renowned, again renowned uh, botanist. 
uh, who began the Jersey Island of Jersey Wildlife Zoo to protect uh, species that were going to be extinct. Okay. And as a result of going to the school on Corfu, I also wrote a series of travelogues about Greece and France. And they make up the second half of the book okay. called Travels in France and Greece. Brewster, all of those sound so interesting. <laughs> <laughs> they really do. So hopefully people can pick up. Well, it's on their Kindle, not in paperback. No, I hope at some point uh, by the end of this year, mm -hmm. uh, Cheryl and his, his partners are considering mm -hmm. um, making them available in print, called mm -hmm. Print on Demand. Okay. Okay. And I personally, being an old-fashioned type of fellow, mm -hmm. look forward to that because I like to have it in my hands. Right, right. right. Well, and everybody likes Electronic Age, though, too. Right? I know, I know, I know. It's <laughs> the future. It's the future, that's right. Well, yeah. for more information on Brewster, just check out the website that you've been seeing on the bottom of the screen. Thank you for being on this morning. Oh, you're <laughs> quite welcome. A pleasure to be here. I'm going to be right back after these messages with impromptu classical concerts of Key West. Stay with me. <laughs> 